Hi, welcome to New Hampshire Politics and Policy. I'm State Senator Cindy Rosenwald, and this, you're seeing this show on Nashua Public Television. This is where we talk about all things political in the 603. And I'm really excited today to have State Rep Manny Espedia join me from Ward 4, which is downtown Nashua, couple of terms State Rep, but he has got another very exciting assignment. Manny, why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Manny Espitia. I'm the, um, I am, yeah, I'm currently the state representative in Ward 4, but I'm also the president of the New Hampshire Young Dems um, and have served in that since 2021. And, uh, you know, excited to work to recruit, train, and elect Young Dems up and down the state here, uh, here in New Hampshire. Well, New Hampshire, I think, probably has the best Young Democrats chapter of any state in the country. And over the last six or eight or 10 years, it's become incredibly active and has really become a force in New Hampshire politics. How many candidates, how many state reps are currently serving who are young Democrats? And first tell us how young <laughs> is, is young enough to be one? So, uh, it's under 40. Okay. Um, so, and we do have our young Dems at heart, um, but it's under 40. And we currently have about 26 uh, state reps in our, in the young Dems caucus. Um, we are, you know, in the past, we've had up to about 30, I believe it was 38 in 2018. We had 30 in 20, uh, 2020, but this year, um, you know, currently we have about 70 candidates who are wow. 70 candidates who are running and um, and about 60 of them are running for the state house. Um, so we're looking uh, to hopefully help them. Um, and if we're lucky, we we're hoping to get at least at least 30. I mean, my dream would be to get 40 um, to get the largest caucus we've ever had. Um, but, yeah, excited to help. And they're from all over the state. We have young Dems who are running in Keene, uh, who are running in Conway, who are running in uh, Portsmouth and here in Nashua and Manchester. So, wow. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. So um, and it's, you know, the work we're trying to do for them is a lot of the times, especially with young Dems, they're, this is their first time running. Um, so we're trying to provide them with uh, just a, kind of some advice and kind of and help set them up for success. Um, we really do try to do a lot of training uh, before they decide to file. Uh, and then as soon as they file uh, to run for office, we, you know, we help support them by helping them knock on doors, make some phone calls, uh, help them with their fundraising. Um, so there's, you know, multiple ways that we try to engage young Dems so that, um, they can, so we can have more representation in our state government uh, and local county government. Um, and so we're, we're excited about the work we're doing this year and then also gearing up, you know, for 2023 when we have to do it all over again. <laughs> well, and you have to do the municipal elections next year. And yeah. I know you run candidates for mm -hmm. school board, select board, mm -hmm. all sorts of municipal offices. So yeah. you're always busy. Always busy. There's uh, one of the fun things about New Hampshire is there's always an election. Um, but yeah, and some of these positions are incredibly important, like, you know, select board and school boards, um, things like the supervisor of the checklist, town clerk, um, board of library trustee uh, in some of these towns for town meeting day. So um, and then here in our municipality, in our cities, uh, we have, um, you know, we have the Board of Aldermen slash City Council races, um, and then in some situations, mayor mayoral races. So we have we have a little bit of everything across the state. Um, last year, we helped about I think it was over seventy young Dems get elected across the state. Um, so you know, while we're incredibly excited about having Democrats, young Democrats from, you know, all the way up in executive council with Shoshana Kelly, um, we all the way down to state, re uh, state Senate, state house, and then, um, and then some of the county offices. So. Well, so I think it's really important um, to distinguish the young Democrats mm -hmm. from the general Democratic caucus, mm -hmm. because 
the issues and priorities may not be perfectly aligned right. for someone like me who's a more mature <laughs> Democrat, although no. I have children yeah. and now a grandchild, right. but someone like you who's mm -hmm. the age of my kid. So yeah. what, what kinds of priorities do you hear are important to young Democrats in New Hampshire? Yeah, I mean, I think climate change and just the environment in general, that's a big one that I hear often. Um, issues around um, public education and making sure that schools are, um, that, you know, that, that they're able to be able to attend good schools. And then also um, at the college level, college and university systems, so making sure that, you know, we have one of the highest in-state tuition rates in, around in the country. And, and because I think of that, our yeah. graduates carry the most debt. And our graduates carry the most debt. So student loan debt becomes a real hmm. big issue for yeah. a lot of our, for a lot of our constituency. Um, what and about then, yeah. child care? Child, oh, no, that, that was, yeah, child care and housing are probably mm -hmm. the next two that I would say are some of the biggest. Um, these are just, you know, these costs add up. Um, they weren't, child care wasn't what it was like 30 years ago. Um, mm -hmm. You know, for in some cases, people are telling me that they are paying a second mortgage, basically, to have child care. Oh, yeah. Uh, and which, you know, that's, that's, that's a big burden that folks have to carry with them. And you know, I think a lot of the time folks like my generation was told you have to go to college the way up like you, this is what you got to do. And so we we a lot of us go do it and some of us take on debt. And because of it, it just becomes um, another thing we have to carry on our backs. So mm -hmm. um, I am grateful that, you know. President Biden uh, has a plan to, you know, el eliminate 10,000 or, uh, or end up to 20,000 uh, student loan debt forgiveness. But I'm also like, you know, there's still a lot of work that we have to do here in the state to help alleviate some of those pressures that our young people are facing. Right. Well, I mean, there's some things we can't affect here, right. like mortgage rates. Right. That's not yeah. in our wheelhouse. But we can build housing. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. we can. Um, pull some levers mm -hmm. to increase housing starts right. um, and some smaller housing or more affordable housing mm -hmm. that young young people could be more likely to afford. Child care, I mean, the pandemic was really hard on the child care industry. Yeah. We lost a lot of spots. Yes. And it's a low paid job. Right. And it's really expensive. I mean, full-time infant child care in Nashua, I think it's more than $17,000 a year of after-tax money. So yeah. there are a lot of times where it doesn't make sense for someone actually to be working yeah. because they're paying everything right. in child care. So that's not good for the economy because right. we want people to be working. Exactly. And, it, you know, it becomes a, a real issue of, like, gender equity of, like, you know, who is going to work and who isn't and, you know, making sure that folks are able to have that choice of, you know, they don't have to say, you know, I have to give up my career so that my spouse can be successful. And, you know, I because I think that, you know, that hurt us, that has hurt us, you know, through generations. So what about um, you didn't mention reproductive Oh, yeah. health i mean it's a big issue um i think and i think it's like it's one of those issues that's gone through generations i think um that not just women but also men are concerned about you know who has the right who has you know autonomy over their body and you know i think a lot of the times folks don't want government to be in you know in their doctor's office so to speak they don't want you know folks like us to who aren't professionals to be making you know medical, medical decisions choices. for them yeah um so i think you know i think i see a lot of people and then I remember a lot of our generation grew up in a time where Roe, you know, Roe was the, the, the law of the land and now it's it's changed. Um, so I think that has really kind of surprised a lot of people um, and has gotten a lot of people fired up. Um, well, I have to say that, you know, I've been, this is my 10th mm -hmm. campaign mm -hmm. cycle. This is the first time I have ever heard unprompted at the doors from men, mm -hmm. how important reproductive autonomy is to them as a voter. Yeah. So 
I'm not surprised really that it's a big issue for, for voters your age, mm -hmm. but I think it goes way beyond that because mm -hmm. even someone older than me, so, mm -hmm. some man has daughters or granddaughters and he certainly remembers what it was like yeah. living in a pre-row world. And I think our generation also, in response to what that SCOTUS decision said, you know, there was a lot of, um, it basically opened the door for what the government should and shouldn't do. And so, you know, it opened the door for Overfill and like, mm -hmm. you know, the the, gay re marriage, reconsidering yeah. gay marriage. Um, it opened the door for it, that would be chaotic. Inter interracial marriage. How would you go back? Right. And, and just, and so... I think I am. I think a lot of people are incredibly concerned about us as a country and a society moving backwards um, when we've made so much progress. So I think my generation, especially one that's been kind of who's done a lot around, uh, who's seen a lot of progress around the LGBTQ movement, um, and doesn't want to go backwards. Uh, well, and also your generation is kind of the target of the Republican voter suppression yeah, agenda. Yeah. I mean, the student vote. And in many cases, college students spend more time in New Hampshire yeah. than people who go to Florida all winter long. <laughs> so they live here too. Yeah. And not everybody has to be a homeowner to vote. Exactly. I mean, I, mean the, I think the... we sometimes forget <laughs> that yeah. you don't need to be a homeowner to vote, you simply need to be domiciled in New Hampshire, and our college students are here yeah, 10 no. months of the year. Some of our snowbirds are here five months mm -hmm. of the year or seven. Yeah, and they're here. Some of them are working jobs around the community. They're obviously paying into they're paying you know, taxes. Paying taxes when when they go out with their friends and maybe you know go to a, a small business. So they're you know they they're an incredibly important part of you know of the Granite State and our in our in our in our in our society. So well, and we need yeah. them for our future economy. So and that's and in a, in a we should be welcoming. Yeah, in a state where we're graying and we're you know where we're losing our workforce we need that injection of young people to come and help boost that workforce so you know i think it's it's a little depressing to see that you know sometimes state our state government can be a little hostile can be hostile towards um towards young people and it's just like why are we why are we trying to push them out when we, we should, should be embracing them. yeah um well so. i i could talk to you all <laughs> afternoon unfortunately we're yeah. going to Mm -hmm. run out of time in a minute. Mm -hmm. If somebody wanted to know more about the Young Democrats, yeah. quickly, is there a way they could reach you? Do you have a website? Yeah, we do. So people can go to nhyd.org, um, nhyd.org, and that has all our information. Um, it has, uh, and we're currently in the process of putting, listing our candidates. So um, so folks will be able to see um, if there's a Young Dem running in their neck of the woods. Oh, that's so fantastic. Well, I really wish you all the best yeah. with your young Dems and I'm glad you came on to talk to the audience. Mm -hmm. This is New Hampshire Politics and Policy. I'm State Senator Cindy Rosenwald from District 13. That's Nashville Awards 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, and 9. And you're watching us on Nash uh, Public Television. Thank you for being with us today.